Hey everyone, this is your host Emmy, and we're playing Dream Dead. Last time on Dream Dead, we were at a barbecue and we talked to guys and their kids, and then Amanda went off to have fun time with her new friendos, and she came home late, and we had an existential crisis thinking about our dead husband. So that was fun. <laughs> Hopefully today will be better. <laughs> so let's just hop right back on in. I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I don't- I won't do it again. Well, mm, good. Alright. Want some eggs? Great! Why, why was that bad? Why, why was that a bad response? Okay, good. I'm glad the thing will happen. Now? <laughs> Whatever. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. <laughs> Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's dad book? As a social media platform. Wait. What? What's a social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Alright, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book. Which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Alright, Pops, we gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, you're most likely to... Oh god, I actually have to do a profile. Uh, polish and start my coin collection, Netflix and Grill Baby. <laughs> Fall asleep watching the History Channel, torment my, torment my children with dad puns, sink into blissful oblivion. Uh, uh, um, this is hard, man. This is, this is tough. Fall asleep. <laughs> If you had one thing to take with you into a desert island, what would it be? <clears throat> My trusty grill, the lost shaker of salt, castaway on DVD for instructional purposes, a boat, obviously. <laughs> I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. No, the boat. I like the smarm on that one. What are your turn ons? Strong dad arms, tennis, tennis shoes with long white socks, a well manicured lawn, street smarts, top tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. Um, street smarts. What do you do to be with you? Whoa! What did you want to be when you grew up? Mm -hmm. Technical writer for manuals and instructionals. No. Salty boat captain. Yeah, it could be. Pro skater who's also an astronaut. <laughs> no. A good father. The president of space. We'll go with good father. What's your favorite movie genre? Or documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, <laughs> romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's your ideal date? <laughs> Napping together, doing a 1000 piece puzzle together, eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m., <laughs> trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost. What is that like camping or hiking? Uh, arson. <laughs> Being emotionally vulnerable. Arson. What do you never leave home without? <clears throat> a sensible cardigan, my sick vape, bro, uh, my book of word jumbles and a pen, a uh, cool knife, my crippling low self-esteem. <laughs> my profile's just gonna be fucking smarm upon smarm. I frequently forgot my phone, keys, and wallet at home sometimes. <laughs> This one. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theory. Oh, I do actually. That's 100% accurate. How proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. Um, if I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. <laughs> when I can next get a cup of coffee, lawnmower modifications, conspiracy theories. Profile completed. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking for at people's profiles. You should message one of them. 
Or maybe more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad! Oh my god, I get to pick now! Alright, I'm going with David, obviously. <laughs> uh, how do you do? I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, yes! <laughs> the inevitability of our own demise or a black cat, so please send me a letter. <clears throat> On a Friday night, you are most likely to listen to some, listen to true crime, whoa, listen to true crime podcast while I text me my newest specimens. Wait, what? <laughs> if you had one thing to take you with you into Desert Island, what would it be? A coffin. <laughs> Perfect. What are your turn on? Um, pronouncing bosom correctly. Uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? A bat, obviously. What was your favorite movie genre? Foreign art house horror. What's your ideal date? It's night. We are at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums, the beat of our hearts. Wow! Wow! What a fucking monster. I love him. <laughs> what do you never leave home without? An upside down cross, obviously. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. Mm. Okay. How do I, I wanna, how, how do I give him like five stars? I'll message Damon. Hey dude. <laughs> this is also true facts. But, it, yeah, you should probably do this. Because once you hit 30, it's fucking downhill from there. <laughs> Rip. Damon seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damon's dad book page and type out a message. Oh, I thought I was gonna type for a second, Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, hey dude, you seem cool, we should hang out sometime. I sit there for a minute before I see that Damon's typing. But then he keeps typing. And typing. <laughs> but is this guy reading a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. <laughs> and he's still typing. <laughs> I set my coffee and the computer finally dings. Oh Jesus. I... Oh my god, this guy. Oh, whoa, there's more. Indeed, I must- Wait, no, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Shit, I missed it. I started the screen. Well, um, uh, something ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll through my garden. Should it please you? Till then, it's you. Yours, humbled, and Damien Bloodmarsh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. <laughs> what a goddamn gentleman. My God. Hey, Amanda. Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she. Oh, no. Wh what? Who hurt you? I'm gonna fucking go punch him in the face. Hey, are you alright? Oh. Yeah, totally. I'm cool. I just found out the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made of plastic. Oh! <laughs> oh, my man. Even the dirt was fake. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. What the fuck? <clears throat> oh, honey. Are you sure that's all you're up about? You have to tell me what's actually wrong. I'm so sorry about your plan. Yeah. If there's, you know anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you, and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on, or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, which, yeah, I'd absolutely do. I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced. But I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me what she's when she's ready. Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. <laughs> no, no, can you interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. <laughs> I just, uh, don't understand that speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying lol and lolmau or whatever and decided that whatever they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, 
How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutant uh, debutant ball? <laughs> okay, now I know you're messing with me. <laughs> Fucking damn it, Amanda. Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Or our dowry. Or So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like the first five pages and I read a review of the movie. Still gotta be though. Great. So what do I say to Damon? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. <laughs> Regards. <laughs> Fuck. Amanda, you just fucking ruined me, dude. <laughs> Amanda, it's so sweet. <laughs> well, I suppose that's that. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I like it. I make the short walk over to Damon's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? A state? <clears throat> And the gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. Oh man. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. Yeah, that's the knocker, you nerd. I pull the large ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes through the house as I strike it against the door. Amazing. Amazing. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil pa portraits of who I shoo assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. Amazing. Amazing! Oh, the dog, though. Oh my god. <laughs> so good. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me! It's like, <laughs> my god, he even... Oh, I love him. <laughs> I love him already. H hello? Silence. An old lamp in the corner flickers dimly casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damon? Indeed, Helm. A pleasure to have you in my home. I look and see Damien standing in the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. <laughs> that, what's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there was the draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? <laughs> I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Please, let me show you around. Okay. <clears throat> Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, <laughs> and the parlor again for some reason. <clears throat> No, fuck off. You need to chill in the parlor. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. <clears throat> we walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, gosh, t oh fuck, it's a kid, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There's some... There's more to see. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damon opens with a flourish. Oh, it's a library! It's a freaking library. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damon is clearly really proud of this room. Look at the windows, look at the butterflies, pick up a book. That's enough- fuck off enough of the tour. <laughs> oh, look at the butterflies. Yay! <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I walk into the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. That's pretty impressive. Nice bugs! I pinned them all myself. Maybe I should show you sometime. I'm concerned. I would stick to the pin right through my finger. Ah, uh, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, Dinam, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more toddly novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the warm, warm... Wow, worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. 
No. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> now to have struggled against the chains that Scott Sasuke had bound him with. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Shirtless and out of the breath, he looked at it. He looks at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. Oh, I think that's enough. <laughs> I also agree. <laughs> Damon snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. <laughs> oh god. Um look out the window. Yay! I watch the window and am greeted by a beautiful view of Damon's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul de sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push ups with his daughters on his back. <laughs> He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand. <laughs> Fucking damn it, Craig! Damn! Did you know that Victorian spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? No. <laughs> but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Please, will you join me for tea? Absolutely! Are you kidding me? I followed him into a sitting room where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damon pours and serves me some tea. <laughs> I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damon smiles to himself. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it. When in fact, the high refers to the better later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's uh, informative. <laughs> Damon takes the seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. I fucking love this. <laughs> uh, your home is very really impressive. Are there a lot of goths in Maple Bay? I like your cape. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a cloak, actually. But thank you. <laughs> Victorian fashion is very important to me. You pull it off quite well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Regardless of my historical leanings, it's very important to me to present myself well. It has taken a long time to come with a, up with a style that's both true to form and representative of myself, but I'm very happy with how I dress. I do get some strange look, yes, but it's something that brings me a great deal of joy, so I don't mind. To be able to wake up in the morning pick from my closet a variety of cloaks, waistcoats, top hats, and even binders that are period appropriate feels amazing. You wear top hats? You don't? What got you so interested in goth stuff? Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Sorry? <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Of course. But it's, uh, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I'd love to see a marching band. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so confused! <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Damn it, don't fucking ruin this date for us! I swear to Jiminy. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby for collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> I like that level of smarm. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, do you, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do! <laughs> but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your just Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing. And did I? What the fuck? Did I write this shit? <laughs> this is crazy. <clears throat> and quite honestly, rather attractive. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated! I like watching soap making videos. <laughs> fuck. That's my mom. Holy shit. 
Love me some more jumbles. Uh, I learned how to juggle once. Oh fuck! I don't. I don't want to ruin this. I'm gonna save. If I make it unhappy, I'm loading because I'm not gonna fucking ruin this shit. <laughs> uh, Word jumbles shows that I'm intellectual, right? Fantastic. <clears throat> I got it. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know, and uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. It's poetic, really. Oh, so you're a writer. In a sense. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, they're on to me. <laughs> we finish our tea and finger sandwiches. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Wow, shit, man. Damon takes me on the ra around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily around the air. My garden. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public. So lovers and friends, ooh, oh my, haha, <laughs> uh, <laughs> alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. And Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous, bright orange flower off of a vi- Ooh. Lilium beltiferium, the orange lily. Do you think this one- What do you think this one means? My loins are ablaze! <laughs> you can't say that out loud! You, you can't fucking say that! Thou art the tightest. <laughs> Three cheers for sweet revenge. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm gonna say- well, Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna say that. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure- Oh! The... Oh no! <laughs> I ruined it! Well. And that's precisely why floral relations is so challenging. <laughs> I just wanted to joke, damn it. I just wanted to joke. Mm. What's your favorite type of flower? Um. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna ruin it! Um. Ah! Uh, no, because he's goth. He wouldn't like the sun, right? Uh. Um. I'm gonna go with honeysuckle. They smell really good. And then you can eat the tiniest little drop of nectar when you pull the stem out. Oh, thank god. Oh, god. <laughs> I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> he he would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's ever given me a bouquet before. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Oh, Deal, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. <laughs> Go for it, man. <clears throat> Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into the garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of, a ch of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh hey, a gargoyle! <laughs> oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle! Oh, you fucking failure! Oh no. What have I done? Oh <laughs> no! No no no! Uh, I I oh tsh, no! Damon's gonna be mad as hell. Oh god! Damon's gonna be mad as fucking hell. No please, please God! Oh thank God! <laughs> I was really concentrating. <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh god! Oh god! Uh, <laughs> ooh, that was a close one. Oh, oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Deedle, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything's all right. <clears throat> Damon worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. 
Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, hate solution. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post haste. Do you need help? Uh, no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would have greatly treasure having s another parent by my side. Let's go. Oh no, Hugo. <laughs> oh no, what is this dumb punk one? Dame and I walked to the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. <laughs> hey, Damon, you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damon's first time to the My Kids Are In Trouble rodeo. <laughs> Shit. What is it this time? This, Damon, you have to see, to believe. Damon and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down uh, into the darkness. Okay, well guys, before we actually find out what's in the darkness, I'm going to call it an episode. So, I'm going to pause it here, and uh, I hope to see you come back for the next episode. Thanks for joining me so far, and I'll see you then. Good night, everyone.